So we have our first mock draft on oh, NFL.com. And right now we're going to welcome in the man who's behind it all, a former scout with both the Ravens and the Browns, live from St. Petersburg, Florida, for the East-West Shrine game this weekend. Good morning, football. Mr. Move the Sticks, Daniel Jeremiah. This is your worst nightmare out here, Shregs. This is definitely not sweater weather. I know. Oh, I, I know, it. DJ. I know. I can't make it up, dude. Take us through your top three quarterbacks <laughs> in your mock draft. We see that you got Trubisky going number two to the Niners, and then you've got, obviously, Deshaun Kaiser at Notre Dame, and then you got Deshaun Watson in the back half of the draft. Take us through the, your three quarterbacks that you see as first-round prospects and what separates those guys. Yeah, you know, always got to explain there's a difference between a top 50 list and the mock draft. You know, how I have them ranked personally is Kaiser 1, then Trubisky, and then Deshaun Watson. In this mock draft, though, just being around the league and talking to folks, there's a lot of buzz for Mitch Trubisky. Uh, he's got some, you got somebody that's got really quick feet, a good feel inside the pocket. Uh, he's an anticipation thrower. Doesn't have a lot of starts under his, under his belt, but he's been impressive uh, in his brief time down there at North Carolina. I think he would fit in should... Kyle Shanahan get that uh, 49ers gig. I think he would fit in well with them. Deshaun Kaiser, I went and saw his first game against Texas, and this looked like a potential first overall pick. He's big, he's physical, can make every throw. He can move around. He's got 18 rushing touchdowns over the last couple years. Now his play along with Notre Dame's kind of tailed off at the end of the year, uh, but I have him penciled in there with the Jets. And then Deshaun Watson, I think, is going to be a pretty polarizing player in this draft. You, I love his intelligence. I love his toughness. You see him make some big-time throws at Alabama games over the last two years. Outstanding, but the turnovers have been an issue. 30 interceptions over the last two years, the most in college football. So decision-making and turnovers, that's been a little bit of the concern there. But you love the makeup. It's off the charts. Me, DJ, is the gamer. We've seen him on the national stage in big championship games through four touchdowns against yeah. Alabama in back-to-back -back years. When you're a scout and you've been that position, how much do you weigh wins and big game performances versus the measurables, you know, the Trubisky looks like a Greek god out there. <laughs> yeah, look, it matters. I mean, I don't want to say that wins don't matter, but you can't base your evaluation off of team success. We can go through a lot of the quarterbacks that have won national championships and Heisman's, and that doesn't always translate to the next level. Now, what I can take from those games is his toughness. You saw him hang in the pocket and just take big shots from that Alabama defense. So he does get some bonus points for that, no doubt. But you can't erase some of the decision-making that took place in some of the other games earlier on in the season. So it's, it's a collection of his work, but definitely bonus points for those Alabama performances. All right, DJ, you're high on Leonard Fournette and Dalvin Cook. Now, is this bucking the trend yeah. that we now have first-round worthy <laughs> running backs in the draft? And, and how much of Gurley, Gordon, and Ezekiel Elliott kind of helped these teams have faith in picking these guys so early? Well, I don't know that it ever the philosophy ever totally changed. I just think we didn't have that caliber of back. You, gotcha. you had the spread offenses running rampant through college football, so we had a lot of these 200-pound backs. Now we're seeing some of these bigger guys roll through. You just mentioned several of them, and Leonard Fournette is, is a freak show, guys. I mean, you talk about <laughs> speed, power. He has that. He's somebody that has been very productive when healthy. He was a little bit nicked up this year, uh, but this is somebody that's a physical freak. There, there's an old veteran scout that's a friend of mine. He's been doing this for 30-plus years. I said, who do you compare Leonard Fournette to? He said LeBron James. So wow. that tells you what some people feel about him. Whoa. He's a very elite talent. And we're going to see, I think we're going to see several running backs go in the first round of this draft. DJ, it's Kyle. Uh, you know, when Christian McCaffrey declared for the NFL draft, the, the wisecrack started. You know, he's going to go to the Patriots because they love his grit and his motor and his determination and he, <laughs> the film rat. You know it. But then in your mock draft, you actually have him going 32 to the Patriots. Tell us why. Uh, so that you could uh, tee up that question for me. I mean, that was pretty much the reason, Kyle. Coach. I mean, no, look, he's somebody, when you, when you look at what the Patriots value, right, they value versatility, they value intelligence, they value somebody that can be a playmaker in multiple ways, and McCaffrey gives you that. You talk about what he can do on offense, but as a returner, he has that added value. You can split him out. They line him up all over the field. So it's going to be a matchup a nightmare for opposing teams, and that's something that Bill Belichick and the Patriots have majored in, finding guys that can be mismatched players, and I think that's what Christian McCaffrey gives you. And I'm, I'm anxious for more people to get a chance to watch him and study him. I'm not saying by any stretch he's Le'Veon Bell, but that patient running style that, that Le'Veon Bell has displayed over the last couple of seasons is very unique. You see a similar style uh, with Christian McCaffrey, one of the more patient runners you'll ever see.
All right, we want to get to some tweets for you, uh, Daniel, but let's reveal your mock draft, your first one of the season. Uh, take it away. Let's All right, here we go. Let's uh, let's roll it here. Picks one through eight. When you look at this, you'll see the first pick overall. I think it's kind of a no-brainer. You've got Miles Garrett, who's the, the premier edge rusher in this draft class. He's got some freaky qualities to him. He comes in this new 4-3 for the Browns. He's a perfect fit there. He goes number one. Fournette, we talked about. He goes number eight to team up with Cam Newton and give them maybe the most physical rushing attack in the National Football League. As we scroll down to nine through 16, Dalvin Cook. How about the Browns? If they could get Miles Garrett at one, come back with Dalvin Cook, electric running back from Florida State at 12. What a pairing. Mike Williams slides a little bit in this first one. The Eagles get a number one wide receiver. That's a perfect match for them. As we go to pick 17 through 24, pick number 17, Solomon Thomas, who his bowl game against North Carolina, one of the best defensive line performances I've ever seen. He'd be phenomenal there for the Redskins to plug and play. Taco Charlton wouldn't have to travel far going from the University of Michigan to team up with Ziggy Ansah there in Detroit. He's at number 21. Uh, as we go to the end now, 25 through 32, we've talked about McCaffrey there at the bottom to the Patriots. Deshaun Watson, this is somebody I have no earthly idea where he's going to go in this draft. He could end up going all the way up in the top 10 in this mock draft. I have him to the Houston Texans. The Brock Osweiler experiment has not necessarily been a success. They address the quarterback with a, a long-term future starter there in Deshaun Watson at number 25. Real quick, DJ, we're going to get some tweets, but real quick, how do the Browns not take a quarterback number one overall? What are you doing over there? <laughs> well, the, I don't think there's one worthy of going number one overall, and there's a, a strong belief in the league next year's quarterback class is going to be much better. So mm. don't pass on a great player to overreach on a quarterback and then remove yourself from next year's quarterback class. That would be a nightmare. DJ Mitchell Hardy on Twitter likes your mock. He says, I can get on board with this mock. Would be very shocked to see Deshaun Watson fall so far, though. And uh, hi there on Twitter says Leonard Fournette, eighth to the Panthers. Too low. What say you, Daniel? Well, look, as a player, yeah, I, I could agree with that. That is a little low. But you have to factor in the needs of the teams above them. Mm -hmm. You've got a team like Chicago picking three. You've got Jordan Howard, who, who did what he did last year. San Francisco has all these other needs, and they've got Hyde. So you have to look at the, the roster composition of these teams when you're trying to slot these players in. Obviously, it would be a heck of a value for the Panthers at eight. Great stuff from Daniel Jeremiah. Thank you for joining us today. And you can check out the complete list of the top 50 prospects and the first edition 1.0 of the mock draft for 2017 over at NFL.com slash top 50.